What's up YouTube? Aram here with Urban Tarantulas and I forgot my hat. BRB. <laughs> I'm back. Aram here with Urban Tarantulas. This is my facility and today we are gonna have some fun and hopefully not get bit. We're gonna clean out facilitaria enclosures. So most of these are communals. We're gonna do some rehousing. There's 50 regalis babies in here. Wow. Yeah, believe it or not. We got some rufaladas in here. We got a big rufalada in here and we have a whole bunch of regalis in here. So we're gonna do some cleaning. I may even go ahead and grab some other facilitaria communals, make them look a little pretty. The tools we're gonna need are a couple of tongs, a whole bunch of catch cups. I like using these. These are 32 ounce uh, catch cups. I get these from Superior Shipping. I'm gonna get the tarantulas and coax them into the catch cups, put the lid on, and then take them out, work inside if I have to. And a pair of gloves because we're gonna wipe off a whole bunch of poop off the walls of the enclosure. So Pacilitharias like to poop on the walls quite often. So if you wanna keep a, keep a communal and you wanna keep it very, very clean, you're gonna have to clean the walls maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, somewhere around that time frame. So we're gonna show off what the enclosure looks like when it's dirty. So I don't think we've cleaned the walls on this enclosure for maybe two months or so. Mm. So it's pretty filthy. It's definitely time to go in there and do some maintenance here. Let me open up this enclosure so you could go in here, camera could pick up how dirty it is. And we actually went in there and already deep list. We took out all the uneaten cricket leftovers. We got some more that we missed. It's always healthy to do a substrate change a couple times a year. Take out all the webbing. It's always a good idea. It's very hygienic to clean out everything and just start fresh every so often. Obviously not every week, but ever so often. Bunch of uh, juvenile regaluses. These guys are awesome. We will slowly start taking them out. The goal is to get a whole bunch of them in here so we're not using too many catch cups. We got one. Hopefully that one stays in there. No. So I think it's gonna be easier to put one in each catch cup at a time. What's the venom like on these? So because these are a Pacilitharia species, the venom is pretty potent. You do not want to get bit by these guys. It's not going to be fun. I have been bitten by one of these, but not by a regalis. It was a Pacilitharia metallica, and it was not fun. I mean, it took me like 14 years to get bit by one, but when I did, man, was it painful. But it's, it's really not common to get bit by these guys anyway. We're going to work our way and get every single one of them out of here so we could do a complete substrate change. We got two in here. Can we get two at a time? Where is it? Oh, there it is. All right, we're back and we're gonna continue. Ooh. It's much easier to get them from within the inside of the enclosure. Just kind of gently cup them. It's just very time consuming. Yes, we got two in one. <laughs> so we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Pacelotheria regalis. Is there more? Oh yes, there is one more. And this is the ninth. All right, now we start the cleaning process. Take the cork bark. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it underwater. water. 
The Pacelitheria species. Are they communal? Some are, some aren't. I would say the most communal of all Pacelitheria species is probably gonna be the Regalis and then the P. metallica. The Tigrina waselli is also very communal. The rest, it really depends. I've had success with Triadas to a certain point. Oh, Mirandas are also pretty communal too. Striatas, I would say probably not. I have not tried the Sapuscus to see if they're communal or not. Those are just too expensive of a species to try and see if they're communal or not. Mr. Cameraman, what's your experience? So I have a Sapuscus communal. They're doing well. It's Highland. I haven't tried the Lend. P. ornata is definitely not communal. Tornadas are not communal, that's right. Like whatsoever. Rufaladas are communal from my experience. And striatas are also communal from my experience. Fasciatas, I would say no. Do we agree that Regalis, P. Metallica, Tigrina Waselli, and Miranda are communal? Yeah. I'm gonna take this uh, substrate out, fill it with some new substrate, clean the walls, and then we'll be right back. So for cleaning the acrylic, I just spray water on the walls, let it seep in the poop for a couple of seconds, and I just wipe it off. I just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat until I get all the poop off of the walls. You can use rubbing alcohol. Might work a little bit faster, but water works just fine, honestly. Easy, simple, quick. Takes a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back. Substrate. I just use straight up cocoa. I'm gonna put a couple of inches of cocoa. I'm gonna start placing the cork bark. I'm put this piece of cork bark here. And you can get creative with your own enclosures. I like to keep it as simple as possible, to be honest. I find that it works best. And I'm gonna start putting the regalis back in here. There's one. So what's the secret with Pocilotheria communals versus like let's say an M. Balfouri communal? The Balfouri are gonna be the most communal of all species in the entire tarantula hobby. You can't beat the communalness, if that's even a word, of the Monocentropus Balfouri. They're just super, super communal. With other species, People are less inclined to try them out. It's very well documented that the Balfouri is communal, right? But with Pasolotheria, it really depends on who you ask. If you ask me, I'm gonna say that, yes, they are communal. If you ask another tarantula keeper, they might say, nah, they're not communal based on their experience. I think that if you keep them in close quarters, ideally, this would be a little bit smaller, but you know, these guys have been doing extremely well. I like this enclosure, so I'm not gonna move them out. It works. I think that's the secret. All right, so this next species, Pocilotheria species in this side of the enclosure, we have a single tarantula in here. And in here, we have a giant. We have a monster. It is a Pocilotheria rufalata. Woo! Oh man, this guy or this girl makes me nervous every time. Nobody ever wants to get bit by something like that. Like, you, you do not. You're gonna be in the world of pain. But today, we're gonna we're gonna be brave, we're gonna tough it out, and we are going to hand, no, we're not gonna handle it. I have handled her, actually. Catch cup. She looks pretty docile, dude. Yeah, she is. This is <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Do you hear the stridulation? Oh man, what a beauty. I think we gotta photograph her, though. Let's do it. We'll be right back. Where's the measuring thing? Right there, look. Oh. <laughs> Show them how to measure a tarantula properly. So you go from the, the furthest leg to the other side for this leg. Her DLS is showing about eight inches, seven and a half, eight inches, but she's not completely spread out. I want her to spread out just a little bit more so I can measure her. Oh, okay, there we go, that's perfect. So this is how you measure a tarantula properly. DLS, we are looking at over eight inches actually just a tad bit over eight inches she still has a little ways to go she can still get a little bit bigger all right this part i'm actually a little bit nervous we tried to get some photos of her in her enclosure but they did not come out that well so we're gonna try to coax her out we're gonna put her on that black background and try some uh, photos like that this is a little nerve-wracking this could go pretty good or pretty bad 
Oosh. And yes, she can fit in here. No issues. There we go. Woo! Okay, we got her. Wow. She's massive. She's massive. Get that vent shot. Bad. Can you see the big spidissy? 100% female. 100% female. 1000% female. Okay, now we're gonna close this back up. This is gonna be tricky. The goal is to get her to climb on this thing so we can take some photos of her without her roaming the entire room. Ooh, okay. She looks good. She looks great, actually. Are we gonna get some epic shots? I think we are. BRB. All right, we got the shot that we wanted. And we're gonna put her back in here and back into her enclosure after we clean it. Whew. She is so well behaved. Alrighty. And it is time to put this giant female back in her enclosure. Give her some hiding space. Keeping it super, super simple, the way we like to do it. All right, pretty mama. And off you go. She was actually very chill, very well behaved. Let's get her to climb onto the enclosure so we could check her massive size out. And they do get bigger. There we go. There we have it. Let's close her up. Voila. So we're going to move these regalis now into this enclosure. It's a little bit bigger and they are of age. Rehousing a communal should not be very difficult. So we are going to show you how to do it. We're going to remove as much webbing as we possibly can without disturbing them too much. And I don't think we've had any cannibalism. So that's a good sign because I haven't seen any dead spider bolus when we clean. We're going to do that and then the rest one by one. There is an easier way to do it. Just get a vial. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right here. Put yeah. it back. So you're just going through, making sure that there's no other ones left behind? Yes, sir. Making sure that we get every single little one of them. Dude, is it me or does this one look like a P. Metallica? Oh, yeah. What is a P. Metallica doing in here? It's kind of blue, right? Yeah. Get it on your hand. We could get a better shot. Is it a P. No, nah, it's probably a Regalis. I saw a hint of blue in there. What do you think? hard to tell yeah yeah when they're tiny they don't have their coloration so it's gonna be kind of hard to tell exactly what species they are and it's that simple it's pretty simple we're gonna label it regalis we're gonna move off to next one we got rufaladas and now for the transfer of the pacellotheria rufaladas Beautiful, look at those greens. Dude. Just a beautiful species. One of the best looking Pacillotherias. Alrighty. So we got what, one, two, three, four, five, six maybe? They're beautiful greens. Oh yeah. So there's 11 in here? I think so. And now for the grand release. You do not want to do this with terrestrial species. And that's how we do it. 
rehousing Pasolotheria communals. Oh, and you know what? Let's check out the babies from the P. Metallica. So we pulled these babies last week. They are eggs with legs. Actually, I see one going bad, so we are gonna go in there and take it out. You see the black one? Yeah. Definitely wanna remove anything that you think is gonna go bad. The rest look great, actually. So I'm gonna fluff them. Kind of just move them around. And put them right back. And you fluff them to give them airflow, right? Yeah, just kind of rotate them. You want to do that every so often. So P. Metallica baby's coming soon. That's it. That's going to conclude our video for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions regarding anything communal related or tarantula related, holla. I do respond to all of my emails. Urban tarantulas at gmail.com. That's it. Over and out. And Mr. Cameraman, you want to do that little heck helicopter thing that you typically do? This is our facility. Over and out.